Hello, I'm a gardener. In this video, I'm going to present your questions and then my answers to those questions. Now, in my squash videos and in the comment sections, I have received many questions from you about growing squash and preventing the squash vine borer from killing your plants. So in this video, I'm going to answer some of your questions. And uh, if I don't answer your question, then put it in the comment section below this video and I'll address it again. So we're going to talk about squash. I'm going to try to list your questions and list my answer and maybe give a little bit more discussion if I think it's necessary. Now I had a lot of questions about timing of when to apply the foil, when to plant the plants. Now as you know for squash I always start them out in pots. So the big question was well can I just start them in the ground by direct seeding? And of course the answer is you can. The problem becomes that the squash vine borer can get into your squash plants long before you know that it's even there. Then I had a number of questions about <clears throat> What, when should I do this? Like in the pot, when should I do it in the pot or do not do it in the pot? Or uh, I don't plant my plants in the pot. I plant them direct seed. And so we'll talk about that. So here we have squash. We're basically on the back patio. It's in one gallon pots. <clears throat> And you see the stem right there. Does not have any aluminum foil on it. And at least so far, I don't have any squash vine bore damage. Same way on all of them. So I had questions about how do I stop the squash vine bore from laying the eggs my plants that are on the patio <clears throat> and the answer is I, I, don't, I don't do anything because I've never had a problem with them um, with the squash vine borer laying uh, eggs on my plants on the concrete back patio so then another question was do I have to start my squash plants in pots and the answer is no you can direct seed them in the garden and then the question then was can I allow them to get some growth before I wrap them with aluminum foil? And the answer is yes, you can do that. The problem is that the squash vine borer moth will sneak in there and lay the eggs long before you got any idea that she's even around. And then one day you go out and you see your squash vines are wilting and you now you know it's too late. Then I had questions about once I add the foil, obviously the squash plant is going to continue to grow. And so then as I, the question was, do I keep adding foil as the squash plant grows? So we'll talk about that. Now the other question was, do I keep adding foil as my squash plant grows? And my answer is no. I usually add foil when I'm setting the plants out, probably up to a length of maybe one foot. And then after that, I don't add any more foil. A question kept coming up about why doesn't the moth lay the eggs on other parts of the uh, squash plant? And the answer is it's not where the plant, it's not where the moth wants their eggs. Uh, the stems of the leaves are hollow. There's no food in there. And they're, the main stem is where the food source for the grubs are. Now I had questions on what would I do this for other uh, plants of the squash or gourd family. And so I had a question from uh, Doc, I get, hope I get the name pronounced correctly, Doc Riordan, and he asked would I do this for zucchini? And the answer is yes. I would do it for zucchini, uh, any any of the any of the squash family uh, plants. 
And then a follow-up question was, would it still be needed if I was growing my plants in grow bags? And that's a very good question. But I think probably I would go ahead and do it just to be on the safe side. So I had a number of questions about what to do if my squash vine is already infected with a squash vine borer. And one of the questions was, is there a favorite place that the squash vine borer wants or likes to lay the eggs? And the answer is yes. It's going to be on the main stem and as close to the ground as possible. Now that's why the aluminum foil is important because it keeps the squash vine borer away from the base of the plant where they are trying to lay their eggs. Now the stem, which is this part right here, is where the moth will lay the eggs. And that stem is, it's not solid, it's filled with a, uh, a pithy kind of a material uh, that, that transports uh, water and food from the roots of the squash plant up through this stem, up and out into these leaves, and eventually into the squash themselves, right there. So this is more solid. I'll call it a semi-solid. Whereas the leaf is hollow. The leaf stem is hollow. So that's why the squash vine borer moth lays her eggs here on this stem. All right, so here, here's the leaf off that squash plant. So I'm going to split this, if I can. And when I open it up, you'll see that the leaf stem, this is the leaf stem, is hollow. There's no pulp in there. So there would be nothing in there if the, if the squash vine borer moth laid the eggs up here on the stem and the egg hatched and burrowed into this stem, there is nothing in there for it to eat. So that's why the moth does not lay her eggs on the stem. There's nothing in there for it to eat. Now then I had a number of questions about what can I do if my squash plants are already infected and wilting and dying. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Now it is not unusual to have four, five, six, seven of these grubs in a single squash plant. And a squash plant with that many grubs in it is not going to survive. In the following pictures, you see a squash bloom, and underneath it, or attached kind of at its bottom, you'll see a small baby squash. So that's a female bloom. The male bloom, and you'll see a picture of it perhaps there, it will not have a small baby squash under it. So that's how you tell the difference between the male and female blooms on squash, cucumbers, uh, pumpkins, and, uh, and a few other plants. Any plant that has separate male and female blooms, this will apply to.
If you decide to use this poison called seven, you will need to apply it uh, at least once a week and especially after it rains.